This is a quick fix tutorial where I'm focusing only on difficult sections in the piece, applying only those principles that don't require sound imagination skills and will quickly ease your playing, making technique more comfortable and fluent. These basic principles are wrist movement, elbow movement, intonation, arm weight, articulations, phrasing and time. If you've been playing this piece for quite a while, keep in mind that all these principles won't work at full potential, as all sensations might interfere with new ones. Yet they will ease your playing as much as possible in your current situation. This is just a basic fix to let you feel more comfortable while playing, and since we're not imagining sounds, we're not making any harmonies, dynamics or voice and nuances in this tutorial. Match the wrist movement with the known direction. Move gently without any tension. At the last stage of practicing, this movement will be remained in muscle sensations only and won't be visible to the eyes. This will keep your wrist tension free. And a missing fingering in the score before starting playing. While the wrist movement is matching the known direction, the elbow is moving towards the new position on a circle note. This will release tension in hands and improve speed and accuracy in leaps. Good morning everyone, um, today we are continue, well, starting, <laughs> starting slash continue with Opus 10 and um, we're back to our normal softer piano and let's start as usually with um, hands, wrist and elbow movement. Again, I will never stop uh, reminding you to keep your hand absolutely relaxed and literally sleepy. Um, and I have so many comments about how, why and when your hand would become less sleepy, you know? I mean, it's quite hard to play with an absolutely relaxed hand, but as I always tell you, all the tension comes not from your hand, but from your mind, how you imagine sound, how you intonate, how you internally sing while playing. This is where the focus, this is where the energy comes to your hand and then it will naturally, in a healthy way, prepare your fingertips, prepare your fingers, muscles, I know, yeah, yeah, well, I call them muscles or fingers over here, uh, while keeping your hand absolutely relaxed. So, yes, we need to start with absolutely sleepy, lazy, almost like a feather on the keyboard, keep, uh, hand. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm talking too much today. on a 
Also because my hand is always relaxed, it's always in a closed position. Which can explain because if I play like this all the time, my hand couldn't be relaxed. Alright, so let's go to intonation. Sing in between notes with a glissando and resistance. Keep the same sensation while singing out loud only notes. While playing, keep singing the same way internally. It is possible to sing the same way while playing fast passages. Internally sing with the energy of weight. This is how it sounds without weight versus with weight. Such singing will sustain transferring of weight while playing, bringing more freedom and power to your voice and hands. And before starting with intonation, um, and you know that intonation includes internal singing, transferring of weight while playing to the keyboard, and uh, correct internal singing of articulations. And you see those accents here. These are not uh, accents for our singing. There's an accent that Chopin wrote for the fifth finger. <laughs> because if you play this etude, you know that um, this fifth finger tends to be weak and also not really accurate. I mean, the interval towards the fifth finger is not really accurate. So, um, probably he wanted to show student that the fifth finger has to be a little bit more stable. Anyways, uh, ignore these accents as part of intonation, but just keep in mind that you have to somehow emphasize this fifth finger, and I think I know how, <laughs> and I'll tell you in some, um, in some moment about this. So let's play just with intonation everything we got.
sorry for those misnotes. <clears throat> So, mm, mm. okay, so let's think, uh, basically, we're gonna intonate this ascending third or ascending fourth when we go up or ascending third when we go down or Mm -hmm. Ascending second when we go down. Basically, this with musical speech, and that will um, prepare our fifth finger better, and that will bring more stability to our fifth finger. So let's try to play with musical speech now. Ability to feel a difference in singing different intervals will let us pre-feel through intonation the distance of every interval much more accurately. That helps mind and hands to faster prepare to the intervals. As I have said before many times, if we can't feel fast while playing, we're not ready to play fast. Feel the difference in sound while singing with intonation these intervals. Phrasing is a structured intonation, breathing, where smaller blocks with more prominent sections are united into larger blocks with more prominent sections. Use intonation and weight in phrasing to make energetic crescendo towards more prominent sections and blocks. While practicing phrasing, take a little break, a breath after every block, and slow down towards the main interval in a motif, the main motif in a phrase, and the main phrase in a sentence.
So, as you can see, we're gonna start with motifs. As you, as you can see, these um, small, short slurs uh, going through the bar line, identify motif. In our main interval, I'm gonna always come to the first beat. So basically, it's the last interval in the motif. And uh, the reason of this phrasing is to uh, not only bring expressions to our playing, but to maintain a healthy breathing in kind of muscles uh, and sensations of our hands. Because, um, as you just saw, <laughs> when we um, back off in the beginning of every block, whether it's motive, phrase, or sentence, we give less energy and it's like mm, more relaxed. And then we're going towards the main interval or towards the main uh, motive or towards the main phrase. And this is where we bring more intensity. Um, so basically everything is moving in the wave pattern and basically it's tension, release, tension, release, tension, release all the time. Uh, if you don't make any phrasing or you don't know how to make phrasing correctly while playing through internal singing, then probably you will play either on always stop at tension or completely relax and like exhale, which also is not good because constant exhale will eventually bring tension to your playing. I hope it's not too scientific. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, I wanted to also mention here, I said that in the, my very, very first tutorial of this is three years ago, um, that um, if you have problem with stamina in your hand, like it's getting fatigue, especially in this kind of etude when you need to play just one hand with the same pattern, always for a long time, great. <laughs> He couldn't come up with a better idea to start his eating. Anyways, um, this is where exercising and weightlifting is very, very important because uh, the point of um, training your muscles is to let muscles better doing this motion inside. You know what I mean? Remember I told you about the phrasing that this phrasing brings you like breathing. Uh, so sometimes uh, you go more relaxed, sometimes more tense. So uh, better your muscles are trained, easier for you to relax completely. You know what I mean? For example, if your muscles are weak, then this is how it goes. You tense and you relax. You tense, you relax. But it's very, very small. So eventually you will accumulate the tension. But if your muscles are good, then what is going on is like your muscles are tense and when they relax, they don't just relax a little bit, but they completely relax. Then tense again, completely relax. Tense again, completely relax. So this kind of pattern will let you um, avoid um, fatigue while playing and uh, improve your stamina while playing. So, yes guys, to, to develop this, not this, <laughs> You have to have good muscles. This is the purpose of exercising. <laughs> so let's go by the motive. And I'm going to stop after every motive we do <laughs> but I'm not playing left hand, so I'm just skipping it. <laughs> but it goes to the octave. at one phrase and I'm gonna emphasize the red line slur, the red slur. 
So the first sentence, as you can see, second phrase more important. The second sentence that goes after yellow line, first phrase more important. So let's do it. Time and tempo mean more than just the speed of music, it's a part of the character of music. After choosing the pulsation, connect time to the musical image of the piece. And if the image of music is joyful, feel and describe the pulse not as just slow, but calm and peaceful. Not just faster, but lively and exciting. Not just fast, but energetic and bright. Feel time while playing always following a phrasing line to sustain the flow of playing. In the last step, let's engage and add time, timing. I'm gonna pull stay by every quarter, every crochet. We're gonna connect it together with emotional image and feel it as one character, one state <clears throat> of, um, of music. So let's start with a slow tempo and feel it as very uh, powerful and yet noble. <laughs> Let's go even faster. 
it's very energetic and powerful. Okay. <laughs> That's about it guys, let's go to our next detail.